Hey, what's up, Hack BCA? Let me hear you. Who's excited to be here this weekend? Do you think they're excited to be here? I couldn't really tell from that. Hey, who's excited to be here this weekend? Let me hear you. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody to Hack BCA. This is the fourth edition of one of the most important events of the year. How many people is this their first hackathon? Let me see your hands. Oh my god. Give all those people a round of applause. You're about to have the best experience of your life. You know, what's really remarkable is you look around you and you see all of these students who have given up their weekend to go back to school to spend an entire night in their school actually making something. It's pretty incredible and, and honestly you should all be really proud of yourselves for being here. Uh, you're going to spend the next 24 hours making an incredible piece of technology, pushing yourself, teaching yourself, helping empower the other students around you, and it is going to be a really, really memorable and exciting night. Uh, I promise you're going to have a really great time. Let me introduce myself. I'm Swift. I'm the CEO and co-founder of this little outfit called Major League Hacking. Uh, for those of you who may not have heard of Major League Hacking before, uh, we run the world's official student hackathon league. Every single year, Major League Hacking helps empower over 250 events just like this one all around the world. And 65,000 students just like you go out to those events and make amazing things every year. In practice, that boils down to something like 15,000 hacks that hackers are making every single year. It's pretty incredible. And I'm standing here today, and this is probably my two or three hundredth hackathon, honestly, at this point. I love this stuff. I've been going to them nonstop since I found out about them. But I didn't actually start out as a hacker. Back when I was in high school, I didn't even really think of the programming. I never thought of being a developer. None of my friends were developers. In fact, I was going to be a lawyer. When I was in high school, I was running a small landscaping business while all of my friends were actually bussing tables. I would go and grab my parents' lawnmower, run around the neighborhood, and mow everybody's lawns. It was great. I could work on weekends or after school and, and make a bunch of money, and uh, I had a, a really great gig going on. But the time came for me to go off to university. Uh, my parents very astutely pointed out that I wouldn't actually be able to bring those lawnmowers to the dorm room because my roommate would probably murder me if they were uh, in the room with us all the time. I realized they were right, so I did what any enterprising young high school student would do. Uh, I went on the job board for the university I was going to, Rutgers. I sorted the jobs by how much they paid and clicked the one that paid the most at the very top and applied for it. Uh, it was a programming job, and I had never programmed before in my entire life. I showed up, uh, and somehow they gave me a job writing accounting software in PHP, of all things. Why they would give that job to somebody who's never programmed before, I have no idea to this day. Uh, but it was awesome. I loved that job. But I didn't tell anybody about it. I didn't run with people who programmed. I didn't think I wanted to be a developer. Like I said, I was studying to be a lawyer. Startups weren't really cool. Hackathons weren't really a thing back then. And it was just something I kept to myself. Fast forward a few years, I must have been a, a sophomore or junior in university. And we were building an igloo in our backyard because it had just snowed. And that's what you do you know, when you're in university and bored. Uh, and I had to leave to go to work. And one of my housemates at the time said, hey, what happened to Swift? Where is he? Why isn't he helping us you know, finish this project? And my roommate ratted me out and said, oh, Swift is in his room programming. That's what he does. And his housemate came running to my room, burst through the door and said, hey, I hear you program. I'm going to this thing this weekend called a hackathon. It's like an invention marathon. You've got to come with me. I looked him in the eyes and I was like, you got the wrong guy. Like, I don't program like that. Like, this is not for me. He's like, no, 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 come. It's going to be an amazing experience, I promise. So he drives me back out to my first hackathon. It was Hack and Y in New York City over at NYU in uh, 2010. And I walked into an auditorium that actually looked a lot like this one. There were substantially less people, though. We, made, we would be lucky if there was 100 people in that room at the time. And I walked in, and I was blown away. There were 100 other students who were passionate about the same things I were. They were going to give up their weekend to try to make something cool and tell each other about it. So I stayed up all night making a mashup of Facebook and Dropbox. It was going to be a file sharing network for you and your friends. Uh, and I coded away the whole night. I learned a ton and tried all these new technologies that I'd never played with before. And we got to the end, 
and I actually locked myself out of my own hack and couldn't even demo it. And they were calling my name, Swift. Swift is Swift in the room, and I, I couldn't even go up and demo. But I went home and I completely crashed, and I was just you know exhausted from being up all night and working so hard. And when I woke up and looked myself in the mirror, I said, that was the best experience of my life. Forget being a lawyer, I'm gonna be a programmer. This is so much better. I switched out of, of poli sci into computer science and the rest is history. I've been going to hackathons ever since. But the most important lesson there is to, there's actually two things. The first one is, all it takes is two words. Come with me, three words, come with me. <laughs> I can count. I did study math too. Uh, all it takes is a few words to change somebody's life, right? If my friend had never come to me and said, hey, I'm going to this thing called Hackathon, I would probably be a lawyer. And those few words actually really did make a substantial impact on my life and fundamentally changed what I'm doing today. And each and every one of you in this audience has the power to make that same amount of impact just by telling a friend about something cool that you're passionate about. And the second thing is that it doesn't matter who you are. When you come to a hackathon, this is a space for you to push yourself and learn. Try something new this weekend. If you're coming in and doing the same things you've been doing, you're not doing it right. Push yourself, meet someone new, try something different. This is a safe space where you can do that, experiment, be supported by all the people around you, and really level yourself up. I've talked to a ton of people this weekend who, this is their first hackathon, they've never coded before. Well, I'm really, really excited to see what you build. You're gonna make something awesome. Everybody is, and it's gonna be really exciting to see how everybody shows up. So, with that, I'm really, really excited to welcome you out to Hack BCA. I think you're gonna have an incredible weekend. I want your help giving a huge round of applause for all the hackers, the organizers, the sponsors, the Some of our events that we have throughout our hackathon. 
we have a pitch competition at 9.30 p.m. tonight. And basically what that is, is, is um, any individual with any idea, regardless of if you're using it for your Hack DCA project idea or not, are welcome to join us and basically give a 90 second pitch to our judges and you will be based, judged based on um, the idea and how good your presentation is. So feel free to join us for that. And then we have a CTF competition. How many of you guys have ever participated in a CTF before? Okay, so about half of you. If you don't know what a CTF is, um, basically when you say the word hack in a hackathon, you mean you never mean to actually um, break into a system, but you mean it to say build something or build a project. But in our mini CTF, you guys will be getting the chance to work with your team to break into our CTF servers, and eventually the goal is to capture the flag. That's why it's called CTF, but work with your teams to break into our servers in order to compete with other teams and get the code as fast as you can. So even if you are new to that and don't know what that means, um, feel free to join us at 1.30 a.m. tonight for that. <laughs> I mean, none of you guys are going to be speaking, but anyway, so. Then we have two games scheduled for you. Other than that, we have um, cup stacking at at 10.30, I believe, and we have a Smash tournament at 2 a.m. And we'll be making announcements to call you guys up, so keep that in mind. And all of our games and events all have prizes, and they're pretty good too, so make sure to check it out. And some other details, um, if you guys take a look at your name tags for a second, you have different lanyard colors. Have you guys noticed it? Yeah. Okay, so you also have a group number at the bottom here. So keep in, just make sure you're familiar with what lanyard color you have and what group number you have because we're gonna be calling you guys out for meals and shirts, um, ice cream, stuff like that based on your color and group. So just make sure you know what color you're from. Also, if you haven't noticed, everybody in a blue shirt is a Happy CA staff member. So if you have any questions, um, please make sure, please feel free to reach out to any of them. Anybody in a red shirt is a mentor. Anybody in a red shirt is a mentor. So if you have any questions while working on your project, or if you're just stuck, you don't know where to go, or you don't have any ideas of what to do, um, what you can use is we have a Happy CA for Slack set up. It's happyc4.slack.com. Um, hopefully everybody, once you guys go into your, the gym, um, just register there. We will have the link open on, we will give you guys the link through our social media websites and you will be able to get um, mentors from there. Also in the gym, there will be a table um, labeled mentors. So whenever you just need help on anything, make sure to approach them. Um, anybody in a red shirt, again, will help you out with anything. And I think that's basically it. So. Yeah, I think that's basically it. And now I'm going to hand it off to some of our sponsors who we wouldn't, we really wouldn't have been able to run this event for you guys for free um, if it weren't for our sponsors. So first we have Ashu from Make School. started the company about five years ago. Uh, I'll start by giving you a bit of, bit of background on myself. About eight years ago, I was sitting exactly where you are. I was in high school, I was a junior, had taken some computer science classes, uh, and taught myself over the summer how to build iPhone apps. And my first game called Helicopter, it was a clone of a flash game that you probably all played on the internet. Um, it ended up selling about 50,000 copies in the app store. 
uh, and I made about $30,000 as a 16 year old. This was great. I had spending money, it was a really, really fun experience. Um, but more important than the money that I made from this product, I had people from all around the world writing reviews about something that I had created, saying this is something they, they love to use, this is something they used every day, and they were happy to have paid me for it. Now that experience really changed what I was looking to get out of my college experience, what I was looking to get out of my life and my career. Uh, because suddenly I had found that I, even in high school, could create something of value for the world. And everything, like grades and sports and girls, suddenly stopped mattering to me. And I just cared, hey, I can actually build something that matters, uh, which was really cool. So uh, after building this app, I then went on to college, to UCLA, to study computer science. And I spent about a year there, um, but felt very frustrated with my education. Uh, I wasn't learning the kinds of things that I wanted to be learning. Uh, what I was really excited about and passionate about was building products that people use. But college was mostly focused on uh, theoretical computer science, and I felt a mismatch between my goals and what the education was providing me. So I left school after a year and started working with uh, my co-founder, Jeremy, who will we'll be speaking at closing, so you'll we'll get to meet him as well. Um, and we started working on different apps together uh, and eventually settled on, let's teach other high school and college students how to build apps, how to use their computer science knowledge, whether they gain it at a hackathon or in classes, to actually build products that'll change people's lives. We started by teaching a class at our old high school out in San Francisco, um, and we taught 12 students, and they built professional quality games that were so good that we were able to raise around venture funding just by showing the investors the games that the high school students had built. The following summer, we had 30 high school students invited into our living room, all to learn how to build iPhone apps. They went through our online tutorials, they would raise their hand when they had questions, and me and Jeremy would go out and help them. And slowly, we grew that program from 30 high school students in our living room to 400 students this past summer in eight cities around the world. And we're also working on building a college program, which I'll tell you a bit more about. Now at May School, we spend a lot of time thinking about education, both at the high school level as well as the college level. Um, and I'd like to talk a little bit more on, on higher education, since a lot of you are starting to think about college and what you're, what you're considering. Now, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that software can't fix higher education. We are, at heart, a technology company, but we feel there are some systemic problems with the higher education industry that need to be solved before software can really make a dent. Now, what are these systemic problems? There's three. The first one is the pedagogy, the learning focus and methods. Most uh, classes in, in college really take place like this, where it's one person on stage lecturing to a large group. But this talk will go on for about 10 minutes, those classes will go on for an hour and a half. This is not the best way to learn. Finances. Now, you've heard about the student loan crisis. It's now the biggest debt crisis we have, higher than credit card debt, higher than the housing bubble um, that burst in 2006. You're starting to see this becoming a big problem where our generation no longer can afford to buy houses or buy cars because they're riddled with debt. And they're starting families later, which is actually really bad for society. The final one is policy, accreditation and grants. In high school, there fortunately are a lot of high schools that are innovating on the way things are taught. BCA is a great example. The high school that I went to, Menlo School, is a great example. And at younger levels, the Montessori's are bringing new pedagogy and new approaches to education. But at the collegiate level, because of accreditation, there's very few uh, innovative companies really trying to start new colleges. So at May School, we're trying to tackle these three challenges. Um, we're building what's called the Product College. Now, we're calling it the Product College because it's different than what we would consider a research university. Research universities are focused on theoretical computer science. They're focused on preparing people to become PhDs and professors and go research product problems that'll take 10 to 20 years before they hit the market. This is incredibly valuable. I definitely believe this system should, be, should exist. But most of you who end up studying computer science in college are not interested in the research route. You're interested in working at cool companies like Facebook and Airbnb and building software that'll impact people's lives today. And what we believe at Make School is that there doesn't exist an ecosystem for students who are interested in using software to create impact in the world between zero and five years from now. We're also trying to build our education surrounding this, this product education, where in addition to technical skills and computer science education, you'll be learning how to think like a user, how to understand what they need, and how to design and build products that will impact them. And all of our courses are focused around students building their own original projects. They will build product, products that will impact the world immediately you all know as high school students, now that you can do, you do a little bit of programming, you can use that programming to build products that people love. And so why stop? Why go away for four years to study something and then eventually learn how to impact the world when you can learn while at the same time impacting the world? 
On the finance side, we're funding our college through this concept of in income share agreements. So instead of students paying upfront tuition, they'll pay us once they get a job and once they have, have earnings from that job. This aligns our incentives with the students. Our success is your success. Most universities are getting to be riddled with debt, and when they have more, the universities themselves have debt, they're just going to charge higher and higher tuitions. And because a college degree is a requirement to get most jobs, there's no way to break out of the system. We're trying to offer a different model, where we, we say, we think we can get you a job, and don't pay us until you do. And this aligns our incentives that if we, as a company, as an organization, need to improve our profits, need to improve our bottom line, the only way that we can do this is by increasing the quality of education and increasing the outcomes. And this is actually a really interesting concept, the idea of income share agreements. Purdue University and a few other universities are starting to experiment with this. It's an idea that's been around since the economist Milton Friedman talked about it um, back in the 60s and 70s. Um, and hopefully we'll, we'll uh, start a trend that will uh, help some of the, the finance problems in, in the broader education market. Um, the finest, fi final one is on accreditation. Now, the, the current way accreditation works uh, for schools is a bit like a cartel. The existing universities get to decide the standards that new universities are created with. Unfortunately, what this means is that every new university has to fit a certain cookie cutter mold of what existing traditional universities are for them to actually be become accredited. There's this new concept of accreditation that's competency based accreditation. So, the old model of accreditation is how many hours do you spend sitting in a seat listening to a professor, professor lecture and how, what your grades are on that test that tells you that you've actually learned from that class. Now, competency-based accreditation is, is a new idea that's focused around what can you actually do with your knowledge? What are the skills that you have and what can you actually create? So with competency-based accreditation, we can actually work with companies to create competencies in different, uh, different topics. So you can have Google coming up with a competency on machine learning. You can say shipping an app to the App Store is a competency. This is unfortunately something not, that we don't offer today. Uh, we're unfortunately not able to offer degrees, but it's something we're working towards. And this is, again, a new concept that we're really trying to push forward um, from both the policy side as well as, uh, as, well as what we're doing at, at our institution. Um, so these are some of the three big systemic problems with higher education. Um, what is exciting is that there's been a lot of movement uh, pushing forward with, with all of these problems. And if we are able to solve these problems, then software can eat higher education. Now, most people today, when they think about integrating software into education, into schools, whether it's high school or college, they think about software as an add-on to everything that they're already doing. But the new wave, the new uh, set of companies that end up building schools, whether it's uh, high-scale charter school networks or, uh, or universities, are really going to be thinking about how to build these institutions with software from the ground up. Now, what does that look like? For us, it's Make School OS. There is one, uh, the first piece is online courses in the community. Uh, this is to expand our reach beyond students who can enter our in-person programs. We have mostly free online courses, including a high school curriculum that we've been given to uh, 100 high schools for free. Um, online community as well to keep our alumni as well as the broader community engaged. A student management system, this is to track students all the way from when they hit our website, they're interested in us, to all the way until when they're a student, they're an alumni, continue to track their progress. Um, finally, the learning management system. Um, this is about how we bring software into the classroom to make things more efficient. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Khan Academy, they have this idea of the flipped cl classroom model, where you go through online courses and you go through an online portal and you use instructors as resources for help when you get stuck. This sort of one-to-one -one instructor experience as opposed to the sage on the stage uh, lecturing. So this is also something that we're, we're trying to do, trying to innovate on how can we uh, make the classroom experience better with technology, not to replace in-person teachers, but to augment them so that a one to 15 student instructor ratio feels like a one to five. Now, what's really neat about this is that because we're building a school for developers, in addition to our core development staff building these software, building the core of this, we're starting to experiment with having students and instructors start to build some of the software that lives on the fringe of this. And it's really exciting for us to think about, instead of, uh, or just like having an open source project, we can open up our development of our technology and our stack to our students as well as our instructors. Um, now, make sure we strive to impact the global economy. Um, we've reached 3,000 offline students from about 50 countries and had about 2 million students on, online um, from about 180 countries. And a lot of these students have come from uh, our Summer Academy. Um, this is a program that's probably most relevant for most of you. Uh, our Summer Academy is an introduction to product education, 
where you can ship your own app game or VR experience to the App Store. Um, the curriculum's been used by MIT and Carnegie Mellon to run courses there. Our alumni have interned at Facebook, Google, Tesla, and more. Um, the program's two months, it takes place in New York City, San Francisco, and uh, a variety of other local cities. Um, so if you're interested in product education, if you're interested in learning by making and learning to create impact and becoming a world positive entrepreneur or a software developer who works on problems that, that matter, um, you can apply to Make School. Uh, there's a priority application. Uh, we'll review your application quickly uh, at make.se slash hackbca. Uh, thanks. Uh, so while that's getting set up, uh, I have some t-shirts to throw. Who wants a t-shirt? So, I like to introduce myself. I'm Sharon, and I am a major league hacking coach. So, what I do is every weekend I go to different hackathons um, around the country, and I help out as part of uh, the MLH coaches program. And basically, what I do is I provide resources. I help out with hackathon organizers. I help out with mentorship, um, things like that. So, feel free to hit me up at the MLH table whenever you want to. So, one of you, some of you might be wondering what MLH is, especially those first-time hackers. Well, basically, we are the official student hackathon league, and what we do is we help organize hackathons and we help empower student hackers. We're made up of over 65,000 students, um, just like you, and basically we help run over 200 hackathons across North America, Europe, uh, and Mexico. So if any of you are going to a school that doesn't currently have a hackathon, we'd love to hold a hackathon at your school. Um, the best way to earn points, so basically we have this system on um, the MLH website where we rank schools based on how many student hackers go to hackathons and how much, uh, and like different prizes they win. So the best way to earn points is by actually going to hackathons. Um, at the end of every hackathon season, so every year, we have a prize for the school that actually earns the most points and you get a hacker club makeover, which is really awesome. And obviously the best way to do that is to bring all your friends. So like Swift said, bring all your friends to hackathons. Tell all your friends about how awesome hackathons are. Um, I'd like you to take a quick second to thank our main sponsors, uh, Dell and Windows, for providing the resources necessary to empower our student hackers. Now, some of you might be also wondering, what are we doing during this weekend? What is MLH really doing? Well, we are running cool events like our cup stacking event um, happening at 10.30. And in addition, we're also running an MLH Harbor Lab, which you can find at harbor.mlh.io, where you can find things like Oculus Rifts, Dells, and, uh, Alienware, you name it. Just go on the website. There's going to be a list of all the hardware you can check out immediately after the opening ceremony starts or ends. Um, so these are just some of the other companies that we also have um, with their hardware in the hardware lab. So 
In addition to that, uh, we also have domain.com domains for anyone who's more into software, uh, as well as the GitHub Student Developer Pack that you can sign up on online. GitHub is also offering an Octocad drawing competition. So is anyone here an artist? Raise your hand. Is anyone here an aspiring artist? Okay, so GitHub, every weekend, so GitHub basically is giving out a Octocad figurine for anyone who draws the best Octocat. So make sure you tweet it at GitHub Education. Um, oh, my bad. <laughs> make sure you tweet it at GitHub Education. Um, hashtag my Octocat. Hashtag um, BC, hack BCA. So um, in addition to that, we also have our hack harassment uh, prize um, as well as the hack harassment badges. So hack harassment essentially is a initiative for people who want to um, help end cyberbullying. And what you can do is you can sign up online at the Hack Crossing website, and they'll have resources available for you as well as a pledge that you can take. And if you stop by the MLH table, we have a really cool swag item for anyone who wants to sign up on that. So obviously everyone loves prizes. So MLH is providing prizes for all the top finalist teams as well as our Hack Crossing prize for the hack that makes the best use of anti-bullying, um, anti-cyberbullying, anti-harassment as well as the punniest domain name. So if any of you think you're funny, if any of you think you have a cool team name, uh, make sure to enter it into the domain.com prize. Um, we also have our Soylent drawing contest. So if anyone, does actually, does anyone here know what Soylent is? Okay, okay, so Soylent is basically like a meal replacement drink. Um, we have Soylent available, which will be at the snack table. If you get a bottle of Soylent during your weekend, uh, feel free to take a picture of a drawing you make on the bottle and to also tweet it out for your competition. And um, one thing we'd really like to emphasize at all of our hackathons is to demo your projects. It doesn't matter whether it's done, it doesn't matter if you completely pivoted from your original idea. What's important is that you try it. So we have iDemo stickers for all students who want to demo, or actually who do demo, their projects at the end of the hackathon. And also, we will be giving out 2017 um, season t-shirts sometime during the hackathon, so definitely watch out for that. They're really awesome. On a more serious note, we do want to emphasize the MLH code of conduct, so make sure that you respect one another, you keep each other safe. Um, if anyone ever feels uh, uncomfortable during the weekend or if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us at incidents at mlh.io. We're here to help, we're here to support you all. So with that, I'd like to thank, once again, all of our sponsors, and happy hacking! Next we have Dave and Ray from Flake. There's a lot of ways that you can use it. We have a playground, playground.click.com, where you can go upload your own GitHub data, your own Twitter data, or you can also download our ClickSense client onto your uh, laptop, and you can actually run everything there. Pull in a bunch of data, whatever you want, basically. Link it up to your SQL database, MongoDB, pull in some CSV data, uh, and then do interactive visualizations. So it's really easy to code visualizations, right? Everyone knows how to put up some D3, do something in Excel. The interactive visualizations, that's kind of the difficult part, right? That's the tricky part, if you want to actually sort or filter based on different criteria. Uh, and so Ray is actually going to be coding up some interactive charts right now based on some data that he's got in his computer. Um, 
And I would say it probably has like a 40% chance of working. Maybe more. Like, I have, I have a lot of confidence in Ray. He actually came all the way here from uh, Canada. I came here from San Francisco. So we're super excited to be here. Like, we spent a lot of time on very tiny airplanes just to be here and code this demo. And so if it doesn't work, it's going to be just a huge waste of money. <laughs> but I don't want to put the pressure all on Ray. Let me tell you about some of the prizes that we have. Uh, for the winners, we actually have some really nice hoodies. They look really, really expensive hoodies. They were arguing with us over whether we were going to be able to give out more than two of them because they're so expensive. So we were able to talk them into everybody on your team gets a hoodie, and then also a prize pack. Even if you don't win, we've got a ton of um, candy and, what is it, stress hoodie? Thinking hoodie um, to help you through the day, and a few Google Cardboards too. So stop by uh, and talk to us. You know, while Ray is actually coding, my boss really wanted a picture of us up on stage. Could I ask uh, people in the audience to just take a picture and put it up on Twitter? Just tag Hack BCA and say like, hey, this is Dave and Ray, and they're coding. You don't need to mention that it hasn't worked yet. What text editor are you using? Uh, this is VS Code. This is VS Code. And so far, Ray, text editor is the most interesting part of this live coding demo. Are there any good JavaScript developer jobs around here in like northern New Jersey? Could somebody pull up like a career website for me? Because I, I might need that. This is also a good reason to prepare your demo before doing the presentation tomorrow. Don't just leave it for when you're on stage. sighting and also the location. So he's actually selected on the left-hand pie chart uh, triangle-shaped UFOs. And you can see on the right-hand side, it automatically drills down and shows that, I believe that says California is uh, the highest location for triangle-shaped UFOs. So yes, we win again, oh, California. Um, so yeah, that's uh, an example of interactive visualizations, right? You're able to not only visualize your data, but also drill down and get really interesting insights. So this is something that a lot of Fortune 500 companies use Click for, and now you can use it also. Uh, so feel free to stop by our table and uh, let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.
founder of Upper Lion School of Code, and I'll keep it super short because I know you're really excited to um, get hacking. But uh, what we do is we teach high school students to code over the summer. We run two week long uh, intensive uh, summer camps for you all to learn mobile development, web development, and front end development. So how many uh, of you here have never coded before? This is your first time going at it. That's incredible. And how many of you have more than three years of experience? Amazing. So we actually uh, have many different classes for folks at different levels. Um, and um, we, our, our core values, the things that we think are really important when learning to code, um, the first is that learning to code should be hard but fun at the same time. So if you're not having fun, we're not doing our job right. Um, and so we make sure that every class is a mix of um, intensive work, but also uh, we're going out, we're having a good time, we are um, going on field trips to tech companies in New York City and having people coming in to speak about, our, about what they do. Um, the second thing that's really important is that you need a community to learn to code. You need people there to support you. Um, this event is a perfect example of that, having people, like-minded folks around you, teaching you uh, and that you can learn from. Um, and then uh, the last thing that's really important to us is that you should be making things that matter to you. I know that everyone in this room probably doesn't want to, um, not everyone wants to learn computer science, and that's okay. Um, these skills are important regardless of whether you want to be a doctor or a lawyer, you want to go into civics, into politics, you still should have some of these, um, these skills. So we're giving you those core principles, we're showing you the tools that um, allow you to build apps, allow you to build, build uh, web apps, and um, we're having a lot of fun while we do that. So uh, today we're giving, um, we're giving away a, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you come to our site, we're gonna raffle one off. Um, and so sign up, and also we're doing a demo of P5JS. Uh, we're doing a demo of P5JS, which is an art and code JavaScript library where you can build some really interesting visualizations. Um, that is at 2.30 today, um, so come by. Uh, it's for uh, everyone, so if you have no experience, we'll get you there, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thanks again, and we'll see you later. Next we have Tom from ClickPay. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Tom Kiernan, I'm the founder and CEO of ClickPay. Um, and my, I'm gonna be brief, I, I also uh, know you guys are eager to get to the hacking, but I wanted to say really one main message is that you don't need to uh, be from Silicon Valley to build a great tech startup. ClickPay uh, was born just right up, up the road on Kinder Kamak Road here in Ordell, and uh, we've had a lot of fun building, building this great company. And, my, uh, my first employee, he was my eight-year-old son, he actually happens to be a VCA freshman. I'm not gonna embarrass him and say I'm up in, the, in the room here, but uh, uh, the company has grown tremendously. We started in a little 1800s farmhouse on, on Kinder Kamak, and uh, now we have a little over 100 employees, most of which are actually right at the TGI Fridays on uh, uh, those continental towers, that tall building right, right around the corner from here. So. Um, just very briefly about ClickPay, we're a, the easiest way to describe it is it's like PayPal for landlords. Um, we now have millions of people, a few percentage points of the U.S. population, pays the rent uh, through our website. So um, that means you know, literally billions of dollars, millions of people in 44 states all the way to Hawaii are using our, um, are able to go onto their phone or go onto their computer and view their bill and pay by ACH or, or, or credit card. We make uh, life a lot more convenient for both uh, the property owners and managers, as well as for, for, for the renters. And um, you know, I'm just going to finish with one last kind of piece of advice, and it seems to be echoed by all the other speakers uh, today. And that that piece of advice is just to to find a problem that you think is worth solving, and uh, and then you know put your heart and soul into trying to use technology to help uh, help use that to make the world a better place. So. That's what we're trying to do with ClickPay, and uh, I hope uh, all the uh, folks in the room that you guys kind of you know put that passion in life towards something something meaningful. Thanks. Next, we have Greg from Twilio. Hello, y'all. Can 
you hear me? Yeah. All right. Uh, I believe that I am the last sponsor, so I very much uh, appreciate y'all uh, hanging out towards the end being so patient. Uh, my name is Greg. I serve on the developer evangelism team for a company called Twilio. Uh, how many of you all have heard of Twilio before? Oh, that's amazing. All right. Uh, well, uh, so for those of you who haven't heard of us, we are best known for a couple APIs that we have to make it easy to send and receive text messages and place to receive phone calls. Uh, but instead of talking a bunch about it, I thought I'd just kind of show y'all. Um, I went and bought a programmable phone number. Uh, here's a 201 number. We're going to write just a few lines of code to program a text response. So I need y'all to pull out your phone. This is going to be interactive. We need everyone's help here. Uh, and in a minute here, we're going to ask you to text your favorite emoji to this phone number, okay? Um, and so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to create what's called a twiddle bit. So you can write a little bit of Twilio apps actually in Twilio without actually hosting anything or whatnot. So I'm going to call this uh, Hack PCA, and we are going to set up a response. So what's going to happen here is when you text in to this number, Twilio is going to make an HTTP request to uh, this Twimble bit right here. And we are going to reply back by saying body. So that's going to reply back with the body, the emoji that you text in. I'm going to say thanks for texting. Nice emoji. Uh, and I'm going to say, you know, if, if y'all want any credit this weekend, uh, hit me up at gb at twilio.com. I'll also be at the table in the, in the gym there uh, for free Twilio credit. Uh, a phone number costs a uh, dollar a month, but we're happy to hook you up with 20 bucks. Uh, we'll keep you going for quite a while. Uh, so we'll do that, and then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to create this normal bed. Uh, I am going to make this a little bit smaller so I can see it. There we go. I will save the configuration on my number. Uh, and then if y'all could text, once we finish saving here, uh, this number text again your favorite emoji to 201-473-3133. 201-473-3133. Let me know. If you get a reply back, shout out. You got one? All right, cool. All right, for those of you still working on it, it's 201-473-3133. 3133, 201-473-3133. Throw your hand up in the air if you got, if you got a text. All right, awesome. Cool, all right, so that's how you buy a phone number. You can uh, receive, send and receive text messages just a few minutes. But there's a couple of other things that you can do here. And do that, who here is a Python developer? Has written a little bit of Python code before? Phew, cool. I'm gonna do this demo here in Python, but uh, uh, you would do this same thing, whatever language you're using this weekend, you would do the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to import my emoji checker. I'm going to also import the Twilio helper library uh, that's going to allow me to connect with my Twilio account. Uh, and with that Twilio helper library, I'm going to create a new client to interact with the API. Uh, with that client, I'm going to grab a list of all of the messages that have been sent to that phone number that we bought, the local phone number. Uh, then we're going to step through each message, and with each message, we're going to step through each uh, character in the body of that message. And if the, uh, we're going to use our emoji checker, is emoji, if that is a character, then we are going to print that character, all right? Uh, so this is just to uh, uh, hopefully prevent anyone who is going to get cute with this. Uh, we're going to print these out to the screen. Uh, so then we're also going to use that same client here, and we're going to create a new phone call. And that phone call is going to be to the number that you sent your message from, so that's your phone number. It's going to be from uh, the Twilio phone number, and then we just need to pass it a URL. Uh, in order to create that URL, we can actually use Twilio bins again, and this is just in the same way going to serve up a little bit of uh, XML, we call it Twimble. Uh, in order to respond, tell Twilio what to do when you answer that call, all right? So we'll just call this Hack PCA call, uh, and we are going to write code that looks super similar to what we did before. So I couldn't hear that. All right, maybe it wasn't for me. Uh, all right, and we, instead of replying to a message, we're going to say, we're going to have a robot voice say five times, uh, welcome to Hack PCA, although the robot voice wants to call that Becca if you don't put spaces in between there. Uh, and then we will dial, and in the spirit of cooperation here, we're going to drop all of y'all into a conference call together. Uh, so that you can uh, talk to each other. All right? 
So we're going to dial the conference. We will save this. Twilio is going to give me a URL here to drop into my code. All right, and then I can uh, roll back over into my code. Uh, I can run this, and we will see everyone's emojis. <laughs> uh, and uh, thank you all for uh, sending those in. And as your phones ring, ask that you answer it and throw it on uh, a speakerphone, uh, and we will uh, hear the uh, the robot voice talking. Uh, so again, as those calls roll out through there. Uh, Oh, we're in some so y'all didn't decide to do the interest well. So, uh, again, my name's Greg. I'll be at the booth in the gym. Happy to help with anything Twilio related. Happy to help with anything programming related. Uh, and, uh, and we're just around to, to assist. So thank you all very much. Okay, so that was all of our sponsors, speakers. Um, again, a huge thank you to all of our sponsors and our private donors. Whether you guys are here or not, um, we really wouldn't have been able to run this without all of you. And we just have one last presentation left, and it's Liam Rahav. I know you guys have been here for a long time. You got to start hacking and all that. A few last things we need to tell you. Suma's gonna unlock her laptop and we'll get started. I love you, Liam. Love you too. <laughs> okay, prize it is. Who here wants to win a prize? Raise your hand. It's a lot of you, so pay attention. Okay, so we have a lot of prizes. Uh, this work? No. Okay. Oh, it does work. Okay, so, first prize. Um, the first prize that I think I should shout out is the top 10 and first, second, third place, which is basically like the best overall hacks. Um, you can find more information on our live site, which we'll tell you about in a second, about how to actually um, win those hacks and what we look for. But uh, that is the main uh, thing. These are the main prizes. Okay, so the next one is uh, most likely to succeed as a startup. So if you're, who here has heard of Workflow? Okay, Workflow was a, was, a, was a company that started as a, a hack by high schoolers in Michigan a few years ago, and it just got bought by Apple last week. So uh, your hacks can actually become real companies. And what we're looking for in this prize is which one of your hacks is the most likely to be a real company. Okay, best snap. So you guys saw Snapchat before. Whoever sends us the, the, sends us the best snap will win this prize. So definitely be sending us some snaps. Most fire beginner hack. Whoever wins most fire beginner hack will get a box of hot sauce. So, if your beginner hack, if your beginner hack is fire, you will get a hot sauce. What does fire mean? It means that it just needs to be uh, something very interesting, something very unique. Uh, you guys know. I'm sure most of you guys probably know what fire means. So, if you think that your hack fits in the criteria of fire, you can win this. Okay. So now I'm just going to skip through the rest of them really fast. There's a lot of prizes. So that's basically the gist of what I was trying to show there. Um, you can find a lot more information about that on live at hackbca.com. I'm not sure if that's up yet, but it will be up soon. Um, and you can look there to find all the prizes and see uh, what you can win. And also read descriptions about the prizes to see what you need to do to actually qualify for them. Okay, uh, who here is interested in signing up for a PATH? All right, awesome, that's a lot of you. So, uh, PATH is something that we started last year. It's basically a guided um, set of workshops or a guided um, session for you to learn how to code or learn how to do something that maybe would be very difficult for you to learn on your own. So, um, the paths that we have this year, the first one is the iOS path. The iOS path is gonna be led by Make School. Um, so, by, they were the first speakers. They are really great mentors. Um, I learned how to uh, code in iOS from them, um, and that's kind of like my main thing now. So. Definitely uh, recommend this path, and um, again, the only, the only way you can do this path, just one really quick pre-requirement, you need to have uh, a Mac with Xcode pre-installed on it. If you don't, sorry, but uh, if you did, and you were interested in it, and you installed uh, Xcode, this is definitely for you. Okay, hardware path. So this is gonna be led by Chirayu. 
I don't know if he's in here, but Tarayu is uh, an engineering student at BCA, he's a senior. And Tarayu is going to be showing you how to build um, hardware projects using Arduino, which is a really interesting um, thing. It's not traditional coding, it's rather using a uh, hardware interface um, to work in the physical world with code. So that's something really interesting. If you're interested in doing that, um, hardware path is for you. And lastly is the web path. The web path will be taught by the wonderful JMO over there, um, as well as a couple others. And, and it's going to be um, it's going to be showing you not only how to make a, a static website, but also how to make a web app that actually does something. So I think Jay's going to show you how to first how to build a translator, and then he's going to help you from there work on building whatever kind of app you want. Okay, so before I let you guys go, if you guys want to do a hack, uh, not a hack, sorry, if you want to do a path, please stay here. If you want to do a path, uh, path stay in the auditorium. Additionally. If you're interested in team building, if you don't have a team and you're looking for some people to work with, stay here and we'll network you with other people. So again, path or team or team building, stay here. If not, feel free to go. Happy happy everyone. Hardware loans in the lower cafeteria. Come to Suvin. Come to the front if you're doing team building. 